My sister bullied me for years, then my parents forced me to give her my inheritance. Now her business is failing, and I've lost everything. If I got a new toy or gadget for my birthday or Christmas, she would somehow end up using it more than me, often breaking or losing it in the process. When I complain to our parents about this, they just shrug it off and say, sharing is caring, sweetie, you need to be more generous with your sister. It was like they couldn't see how one-sided the sharing always was. One of the worst aspects of Michelle's bullying was how she would turn my cousins against me at family gatherings. She would whisper and giggle with them, clearly talking about me, and then they would all ignore me or exclude me from their games and activities. It got to the point where I would fear family events, knowing I would end up feeling lonely and left out while everyone else had fun. There was one incident at our annual family reunion when I was 12 that I will never forget. It was a hot summer day, and everyone was enjoying the backyard barbecue. Michelle, who was 17 at the time, convinced our cousins to play a prank on me. I had gone down to the basement to get some sodas for everyone, trying to be helpful and maybe earn some positive attention. Instead, I found myself cornered by Michelle and our cousins Tom and Sarah. Before I could react, Michelle grabbed me and held me down while Tom and Sarah dumped a cooler full of ice water over my head. The shock of the freezing water made me gasp and sputter. I was soaking wet, shivering, and humiliated. They all burst out laughing as I stood there, dripping and stunned. I can still hear the echo of their laughter in that basement. I ran upstairs, crying and shaking, to tell my parents what had happened. To my disbelief, they just chuckled and said, oh, that's just how kids play. They were just cooling you off on a hot day. They told me to lighten up and learn to take a joke. Michelle stood behind them, smirking at me, knowing once again that she had gotten away with her cruelty. I felt so betrayed and alone in that moment. As we got older, Michelle's bullying became more subtle but no less hurtful. She would make indirect compliments about my grades or accomplishments. If I was excited about something, like getting a good score on a test or being chosen for a school play, she would find a way to rain on my parade. She would say things like, oh, I guess they must have gone easy on the grading this time, or well, at least you'll have something to do after school now. She always had to one-up me or put me down to make herself feel better. Our parents never seemed to notice or care about Michelle's behavior. They would brush it off as normal sibling rivalry or say things like, that's just how sisters are. They genuinely seemed to believe that Michelle's tough love was somehow good for me and would make me stronger. In reality, it just made me feel worthless and unloved. I started to believe that maybe I deserved this treatment, that there was something fundamentally wrong with me that made my own sister dislike me so much. Despite all this, I tried my best to have a good relationship with Michelle. I would help her with homework when she struggled, listen to her problems with her friends or boyfriends, and support her various goals and ambitions. But she never did the same. She only came to me when she needed something, whether it was help with a school project or someone to cover for her when she snuck out at night. Our relationship was entirely one-sided, with me giving and her taking. Recently, our grandfather passed away. He and I had always been close. We shared a love of books and history, and he was always interested in hearing about my studies and my plans for the future. He would tell me how proud he was of my academic achievements and encourage me to pursue my dreams. Michelle, on the other hand, rarely visited him or showed much interest in spending time with him. In his will, my grandfather left me an inheritance of $7,000. I was touched that he thought of me and had plans to use the money for college expenses. It wasn't a huge amount, but it would have covered my textbooks and some other school supplies for at least the first year or two. More than that, it felt like a final gift from someone who had always believed in me and supported my goals. But as soon as my family found out about the inheritance, Michelle started pressuring me to give her the money. She said she wanted to start a shoe business and needed capital. She acted like she was entitled to my inheritance, saying things like you don't really need it and I'll pay you back someday. When I hesitated, not wanting to give up this gift from my grandfather, she went to our parents. To my shock and dismay, my parents sided with Michelle. They told me I should give her the money because family helps family. When I protested, saying it was my inheritance and I needed it for school, they got angry. My dad raised his voice, something he rarely does, and threatened that if I didn't give Michelle the money, they wouldn't pay for my college education. My mom stood by, nodding in agreement, telling me I was being selfish and that I should want to help my sister succeed. I felt trapped and betrayed. This money was left to me by my grandfather, a man who had always supported my academic goals, and now I was being forced to hand it over to my bully of a sister for a business venture that might not even succeed. But I also knew I couldn't afford college on my own. My parents had always promised to cover my education, and I had been counting on that. With a heavy heart and feeling like I had no real choice, I agreed to give Michelle the money. Now Michelle is excitedly planning her business, talking about supplier contracts and marketing strategies like she's some kind of entrepreneurial genius. She's acting like she earned that money herself, never mentioning where it really came from. 
My parents are praising her spirit and talking about how proud they are of her plan, and I'm left feeling like I've been robbed of both my inheritance and my grandfather's last gift to me. I've been distant with my family since this happened. I stay in my room more, avoid family dinners when I can, and don't engage in conversation beyond basic pleasantries. They don't understand why I'm upset and keep telling me to get over it. My mom says I'm being dramatic and that I should be happy for my sister's opportunity. My dad tells me that someday I'll understand the importance of family and be glad I helped Michelle, but I can't help feeling angry. This feels like the ultimate example of how Michelle always gets her way at my expense. Part of me wants to stand up for myself and demand the money back, or at least get a written agreement from Michelle about repayment, though I doubt she'd ever follow through. But I'm afraid of causing more family drama or risking my college funding. I feel stuck and don't know what to do. This situation has made me realize how much Michelle's bullying has affected me over the years. I've always tried to brush it off or make excuses for her behavior, but now I'm starting to see how toxic our relationship really is. It's not just about the money, it's about years of being treated as less important, less worthy of love and support than my sister. I'm also scared about starting college now, knowing that my education funding could be used as leverage against me in the future. I feel like I can't trust my parents' promises anymore. What if they threaten to cut off my tuition every time they want me to do something I don't agree with? The security I thought I had in my future suddenly feels very shaky. This isn't the first time my parents have favored Michelle financially either. They bought her a car when she turned 16, but told me I'd have to save up for my own. They pay for her phone bill and credit card, while I have to work part-time to cover my own expenses. It's always been clear that different rules apply to Michelle and me, but this inheritance situation has brought that inequality into sharp focus. What worries me even more is that Michelle has a history of failed business ventures. She's tried to start a makeup blog, a dog walking service, and an Etsy shop selling homemade jewelry. None of these lasted more than a few months before she got bored or frustrated and gave up. I'm worried this shoe business will be the same in my inheritance. Money that could have helped with my education will be wasted on another of Michelle's fancies. I've always been the more academically inclined sister. I have a 4.0 GPA and got accepted to several good colleges. Michelle struggled in school and barely graduated high school. It hurts that my parents seem to think supporting her business ideas is more important than my education, especially when I've worked so hard to succeed academically. I've tried talking to other family members about the situation, but most of them either don't want to get involved or think I should just give Michelle the money to keep the peace. My aunt, mom's sister, is the only one who thinks it's unfair, but she lives in another state and doesn't want to argue with my parents. It feels like everyone is willing to sacrifice my feelings and my future for the sake of avoiding conflict. Michelle has been telling everyone about her new business plans and how she's using her savings to fund it. She hasn't mentioned that the money came from my inheritance. I feel like she's taking credit for my grandfather's generosity and erasing me from the story entirely. It's like she's stolen not just the money, but the last connection I had to my grandfather. I'm worried about how this will affect my future relationship with my family. I don't want to cut ties with them. They're my family, after all, and despite everything, I do love them, but I'm finding it hard to trust or respect them after this. I'm also concerned about what other sacrifices I might be expected to make in the future. Will I always be expected to put her once above my needs? The inheritance wasn't just about the money for me. It represented my grandfather's love and his belief in my potential. Having to give it away feels like I'm letting him down somehow, even though I know that's not rational. I keep thinking about our conversations, how he encouraged me to pursue my dreams, and I feel like I'm betraying his memory by letting this money go to Michelle's latest scheme instead of my education. I've thought about trying to get a job to save up money for college, but my parents want me to focus on my studies. They've always said they'd cover my education costs, which is why their threat to withhold funding if I didn't give Michelle the money was so shocking. It feels like they've moved the goalposts, changing the rules of our family dynamic without warning. Part of me wonders if I'm overreacting. Maybe this is normal in some families, but it feels so unfair and hurtful. I can't help but think about how different things would be if the situation were reversed. I doubt my parents would ever ask Michelle to give me money, no matter what it was for. So, that's the full story. I'm really at a loss here. Shouldn't I be upset about this? Should I just accept it as the cost of keeping peace in the family, or should I try to stand up for myself somehow? I feel like I'm at a crossroads, and whatever I decide will have a huge impact on my relationships with my family going forward. Any advice would be appreciated. Update It's been about six months since I last posted about being forced to give my $7,000 inheritance to my older sister Michelle for her shoe business. A lot has happened since then, and I wanted to share an update. After I gave Michelle the money, she immediately started working on her business. She rented a small storefront, ordered inventory, and set up a website. At first, things seemed to be going well. Michelle was excited and optimistic, always talking about her big plans for the future. I started college as planned. 
My parents kept their word about paying for my education, but things were still tense at home. I tried to avoid Michelle and conversations about her business as much as possible. It hurt to hear her talk about her success knowing it came at my expense. About two months into her venture, I started hearing whispers at family gatherings that things weren't going as well as Michelle claimed. Our aunt mentioned that Michelle seemed stressed and overwhelmed. Our cousin, who had helped Michelle with some of the initial setup, said the store was often empty when he stopped by. I didn't pay much attention to these rumors at first. Part of me was still angry about the whole situation and didn't want to get involved. But as time went on, it became clear that Michelle was facing some serious challenges. At a family dinner three months after she started the business, Michelle looked exhausted and on edge. When our mom asked how things were going, Michelle snapped at her and stormed out of the room. Later, I overheard my parents talking in hushed voices about Michelle facing tough competition from other local shoe stores and online retailers. It turned out that Michelle had underestimated how difficult it would be to attract customers. She had focused on trendy, expensive shoes, but our town wasn't really the market for that kind of product. People were browsing but not buying, and Michelle was struggling to cover her costs. What made things worse was that Michelle had taken out additional loans on top of my $7,000. She had been so confident in her business plan that she borrowed money for extra inventory and expensive marketing campaigns. Now she was falling behind on her loan payments. I felt conflicted about all of this. On one hand, I was still hurt and angry about being forced to give up my inheritance. Part of me felt a sense of grim satisfaction seeing Michelle's plans fall apart. But another part of me felt guilty for these thoughts. Despite everything, Michelle was still my sister, and I didn't want to see her fail so badly. About four months into the business, things took an unexpected turn. I was home from college for a weekend when I overheard Michelle on the phone with someone. She sounded upset and was talking about needing more money. What caught my attention was when she said, You promised this would work, Jake. You said you knew how to make this business successful. Jake was Michelle's ex-boyfriend. They had dated for about a year and broke up shortly before she started the shoe business. I had always thought he was kind of sleazy, but Michelle had been crazy about him. Over the next few weeks, I started paying more attention to what was going on with Michelle's business. I noticed she was spending a lot of time on the phone, often looking stressed and upset after these calls. She was also going out a lot, claiming she had business meetings. One day, I decided to stop by her store after my classes. I was surprised to find it closed in the middle of the afternoon. Through the window, I could see boxes piled up and things in disarray. It didn't look like a successful business. I started to piece things together. Michelle was spending most of her time listening to ideas from Jake, her ex-boyfriend. But from what I could gather, Jake didn't know anything about running a shoe store. He kept pushing Michelle to invest in get-rich-quick schemes and questionable marketing strategies. What was worse, I began to suspect that Jake was actually using Michelle to embezzle money from her business. She kept talking about investments and opportunities that Jake had told her about, but none of them seemed to be paying off. Meanwhile, the store was failing, and Michelle was sinking deeper into debt. I was worried about Michelle, despite our troubled relationship. I decided to talk to our dad about what I had observed. I told him about overhearing Michelle's phone calls, her strange behavior, and my suspicions about Jake's involvement. At first, our dad didn't want to believe it. He had been so proud of Michelle for starting her own business, and I think he didn't want to admit that things had gone so wrong. But after I shared all the details I had gathered, he agreed to look into it. The next day, our dad went to Michelle's store to talk to her. I wasn't there, but from what I heard later, it didn't go well. Michelle strongly opposed his interference in her business. She accused him of not believing in her and trying to control her life. She refused to discuss Jake's involvement and insisted that she had everything under control. Our dad came home looking defeated. He told me that Michelle had threatened to cut off all contact with the family if we didn't stay out of her business affairs. He felt helpless, caught between wanting to help his daughter and respecting her wishes as an adult. Over the next few weeks, I just kept observing as the business continued to fail. Michelle became more and more withdrawn from the family. She stopped coming to family dinners and ignored most of our calls and messages. The few times I saw her, she looked terrible, tired, stressed, and angry. About a month ago, everything finally fell apart. Michelle's store was shut down. She couldn't pay her rent or her suppliers. The loan she had taken out went into default. Jake, unsurprisingly, disappeared as soon as the money ran out. He stopped taking Michelle's calls and seemed to have moved out of town. Michelle was devastated. She showed up at our parents' house in the middle of the night, crying and begging for help. She admitted that Jake had been manipulating her all along, convincing her to take out more loans and invest in his schemes. Most of the money, including my inheritance, was gone. Our parents took Michelle in and are trying to help her sort out her financial mess. 
they're talking about bankruptcy and are looking into whether they can take legal action against Jake for his role in all of this. As for me, I have mixed feelings about the whole situation. I'm sad for Michelle and angry at Jake for taking advantage of her. But I'm also still hurt that my inheritance was wasted on this failed venture. If Michelle had just listened to me or our parents instead of her manipulative ex-boyfriend, things might have turned out differently. I'm trying to be supportive of Michelle now, but it's hard. Every time I think about my lost inheritance and how it could have helped with my college expenses, I feel a fresh wave of resentment. Michelle has apologized to me, but it feels too little, too late. Our family dynamics have shifted dramatically. Our parents are focused on helping Michelle recover, both financially and emotionally. I sometimes feel overlooked in all of this, even though I was the one who first realized what was really going on. I'm back at college now, trying to focus on my studies. But it's hard not to dwell on everything that's happened. I wonder how long it will take for our family to recover from this. And if my relationship with Michelle will ever be the same. I'm also worried about the future. Our parents have spent a lot of money trying to help Michelle, and I'm concerned about how this might affect their ability to keep paying for my college. They assure me that everything will be fine, but I can't help but worry. In the end, I guess this whole experience has taught me some hard lessons about family, trust, and the dangers of getting involved in business with people who don't have your best interests at heart. I just wish the lesson hadn't come at such a high cost, to me, to Michelle, and to our entire family.